Welcome to The Revealing. I am once again your host, Papa Rye. Here to bring you information on the Idaho 4 case. Now, as a disclaimer, this channel is for entertainment purposes only. These are my opinions. I'm not here to slander anyone. And with that being said, let's get started. Today, I want to discuss some information that I put out in a previous video. And after further review, I realized that I did make a mistake. And when I make a mistake, I always own up to it if I realize I've made it. And the mistake that I made is probably not the mistake that a lot of you out there think I made, because I'm going to cover that here in just a minute. But the mistake that I did make was the fact that I said that they found a, a Glock 22 pistol and a 40 caliber pistol when they searched his vehicle. And I was wrong, because upon further review and closer scrutiny, I realized that they found a Glock 22 40 caliber pistol. Not two pistols, but a Glock 22 40 caliber pistol. Now that's a big deal from my perspective because that 22 is something that I would have expected them to find. A 22 is something that somebody in the line of work that I suspected Mr. Koberger was really in would carry. And since he did not, that kind of has thrown me for a little bit of a loop. So as far as the rest of it's concerned though, and by the way, that Glock 22 40 caliber pistol is, is not this exact model, but pretty much this model. Okay, but back to the meat and the potatoes. Now, a lot of people and a lot of you out there have probably seen the documents from when Mr. Koberger was arrested in Pennsylvania. Okay, search warrants were issued, affidavits were filed, probable cause affidavits that is, and property was searched. Things were obtained in that search. The thing that I noticed that I mentioned in the last video that for some reason I don't think anybody else has noticed at this point is not new information because everybody assumes based on the way those documents were laid out to the public that all of the items seized came from his father's house there in Pennsylvania. What I want to go over though, and what I tried to go over in my last video, is the fact that when you go through and you look at the search warrant applications and the search warrants that were granted, you'll see that they're specified in a few different ways. And I'm gonna show you those here in just a moment. And I'm also gonna show you the list of items seized. Now the search warrants list the Hyundai Elantra. They list the residents there in Pennsylvania. They list all the things that they expect to see or expect to search for. So when you get a search warrant, it's not just, I wanna search everything these people have. Okay, it's, it's not like when they got a search warrant to Mar-a-Lago and it was a blanket search warrant and they went and searched Melania's sock drawer. Okay, that's not right. In a search warrant, they should list things they expect to find. Okay, and if it's not on that list, then there's no reason for them to be searching for it. Even though if they do find things that aren't on the list in the process of the search, it can still be considered admissible in some cases. However, these documents will list what they expect to find in the Elantra and in the home and what they expect to seize if they find it. Now, it also lists the home with the Elantra being in the garage of the home in one of the search warrants. So 
With all that being said, and you look at the lists of items seized, there's about four pages of items seized. Never once does it separate in those four pages what was seized in the home and what was seized in the vehicle because they were cryptic on what was seized in the vehicle. In the vehicle, instead of listing the property that was seized, they simply listed one of one and said, see attached FBI doc. They did that for a reason because even though that information they knew would be out there and become public, they still want to keep the, the water as muddy as possible, okay, before the trial. Everything they do, they want to keep the water muddy. And that's how they're able to do that. However, a lot of people would look at that and assume, well, they only found one thing in the vehicle. And they're not listing what it, was, what it was that they found. No, if you read it carefully, it lists one of one, and the one of one is the C-attached form. So then we've got to go to the attached forms that list all of the items seized in the vehicle and in the home. And because that vehicle was located in the garage of that home, they can... They can rationalize having Mr. Koberger's father sign the document of receptions just like anything in the vehicle was found in the home and vice versa. They can sign it as potentially he is the owner of anything in that vehicle because the vehicle is located in the garage of his home. So there's other methods that we must use. We must use deduction when going through trying to determine what was actually found in the vehicle versus what was actually found in the home. Now, I'm going to show you all those documents. I'm going to go through it kind of quick. So if you want to go back and pause and look at them, or if you want to go online and look them up yourself, you can certainly do that if you're interested. Once it's done, though, I'm going to focus in on one page in particular, and that's the items that were seized that I believe, it's my opinion, were seized from Mr. Koberger's vehicle. Let's look at those now. Okay, so how do we determine what was in the vehicle and what was in the home? Well, as we start to go through page number one and look at the items that were seized, you will notice that the first page of the confiscated items differs from the other three pages in terms of what they are. And you just have to look close to be able to see that. Because in the first page, you'll see they found that Glock 22 40 caliber pistol. Three clips for that pistol. They found a book with page 118 underlined in it. They don't tell us what book that is. And yes, I would like to know what book that was as well. But I'm not going to look at every book ever written and go to page 118 and read the whole page. So somebody's gonna have to either figure that out or we'll wait for court. The next thing that you'll see on there is a phone, phone charger, things that we would expect to find in a vehicle, a laptop. Now, since the other pages contain multiple, multiple laptops and computers, it's easily ass assumable, wish that was a word, but it's easy to assume 
that that one laptop would be found in his vehicle. Remember, he's from out of town visiting. He's going to have things left in his vehicle like that. Uh, the other thing that we notice is they found green leafy substances. That's a law enforcement way to describe marijuana, and they describe it like that because they can't actually say marijuana until they do a test on it to prove it's truly marijuana. And they found also a bag, plastic baggie, with marijuana in it. Those are things I would expect to find in a vehicle. It doesn't match the other pages. But then there is the giveaway. An envelope containing all of his vehicle information. Now, all of you out there that own a vehicle or drive a vehicle, rent a vehicle, whatever, borrow a vehicle, if you drive it, we all know that we've got either an envelope or a little owner's manual thing that's got all of our vehicle information in it, right? You gotta have that because what if you break down? What if you get pulled over? And Or what if you, we just all do, everybody has it. Nobody has that in their bedroom in their parents' house. No, they keep it in their vehicle. So when they're going through and they're confiscating an envelope with his vehicle information in it, we can then assume, okay, this is the list of things that were seized from his vehicle. Now, does anything I've said prove the case against him or for him? No. However, if you have watched my videos, and a lot of you out there, I can tell from the comments, you've only watched a couple of them. But if you go back and you take the time, if you're interested, and watch all of my videos, then you will find that I have a theory. And that theory hasn't changed since day one. There has been holes thrown at it. I have thought possibly other directions. But it seems like everything I find just solidifies it more and more. So what would I expect to find for somebody that I believe... Mr. Koberger to be somebody who's living that double life, who's doing something all night long and then going to school all day long, and they're aspiring to be something, I would expect for them to have firearms. I would expect for them to have substances. I would expect for them to have things like black masks, Black gloves. Now, germaphobes will have those as well. You can easily go through and, and take everything that I've stated and explain it in another direction. I understand that. What I'm saying is, as I go through all aspects of this case, I see things that reaffirm my opinion on this case. But everybody's entitled to their own opinion. But if you're not sure of my opinion, go back and watch my videos, okay? And it will explain it. Because don't follow me thinking that I'm saying one thing and I'm not, and I'm saying something else that you don't agree with. I don't want you to do that because that's just going to upset you. But in just a little bit, I'm going to put out another video today. Again, it's, it's not going to be on this subject. It's going back to the other subject that I brought up, and that's the other players in this case. And that's how the big picture of everything starts to come together. Now, that one's going to be kind of long, so I hope you stay with me on it because I'm really going to dive into some details on that one. But until then, I want to thank you for watching, hitting the like button, subscribing. I also want to thank you for all your comments, your criticisms, your agreements and disagreements. You know, the, there's nothing wrong with that, right? You're entitled to your opinion, and I want to know it. But until next time, Pavarotti's out.